So today we're not doing a camera review. It looks like we're storm chasing. Welcome back DP Review TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here for DP Review. And you know, often when people are looking at their first camera, I like to recommend a mirrorless system. Something in the APS-C lineup makes a lot of sense. So what I thought we'd do today is look at three of the main cameras on the market. Now, of course, there are many APS-C mirrorless cameras on the market, but today we're looking at ones that are at an entry-level price point that makes sense to people starting out in photography. So we're looking at the venerable Sony A6000 kit. It's still going strong. We've also got the new Canon EOS M50, as well as the Fuji X-T100, their latest entries into this entry-level market of APS-C cameras. It is raining now, and we're not gonna get much shooting done because none of these cameras are weather sealed. So, I mean, I guess that's all equal footing, but in a very negative way. Ah. Well, we got rained out of our first shoot, but that's just the way that life goes. So we're here now, let's continue on with our little buyer's guide as it will. And before we go further, I just want you guys to know, I mean, there are full reviews of these cameras. But what we really want to do here is just give you a nice comparison of the features, how they kind of compare against each other, give you a better informed decision on what you might want to buy. Okay, so when it comes to handling design and aesthetics, our first choice is gonna be the Fuji X-T100. I mean, it is a beautiful camera, but it goes well beyond that. It's got a brilliant 2.36 million dot viewfinder, and the triple control dials really make it enjoyable to use from a photographic standpoint. They've also come up with their most innovative screen design yet, and uh, I think we'll see this on many of the other Fuji cameras in the future. Okay, so number two is gonna be the Canon EOS M50. And actually from a design standpoint, I actually really find the camera quite handsome, but it does have a plasticky feel compared to the X-T100. Still, it's got a great grip on it, a beautiful viewfinder, and although we don't have as many control surfaces, it has by far the best swivel screen and touch interface, and that's a big deal. If you're coming from a smartphone, this camera is very easy to use, it makes a lot of sense. Now number three, unfortunately, it does go to the Sony A6000. I mean, this was never a sexy camera to begin with. It was a very utilitarian camera. It does have an okay grip, but the look is getting a bit dated. And again, we're talking about a very old viewfinder. It was actually low res at the time that it came out. And on top of that, this is still back in the day when Sony had crappy menus. They're so much better now, but we are still dealing with the same old menu system here. It's clunky, it's a slow interface, and there's no touch screen. So this gets number three. Now, when it comes to autofocus, this is something that's very important for the beginning photographer because we all want photos that are in focus, but we might not have the skill level to adjust zones and single points and multiple areas and tracking focus and things like that. And to be fair, all three of these cameras do a great job single focusing where I touch the shutter, it locks on a subject and it fires and they're not changing distance, say a landscape or a portrait of somebody sitting. But what happens when you've got kids running around or your pets playing or a local sporting event? Well, then you need good continuous autofocus to follow those subjects as they change distance from you. And that's where these cameras kind of differentiate themselves from better to worse. Now, the best by far is gonna be the Canon EOS M50. First off, you've got their dual pixel hybrid AF. It gives you smooth AF performance, whether it's stills or video. They track moving subjects very well, but also a big key thing here is just the touchscreen interface. It's quick, it's solid. I can touch on a person, it locks on them. It detects faces automatically and it makes it very simple and quick if I want to set my specific autofocusing point to a certain spot. Now in second place, I would have to give it to the Sony a6000, even though it's older, it does a pretty decent job tracking moving subjects. The only complaints I have there are, number one, after a few frames, it does have a tendency to kind of hunt and lose the subject before it finds it again. So you might miss a few shots out of focus if things are really getting intense. On top of that, it's got a clunky interface. There's no touch screen. You've got to press the center button if you're using the flexible spot option only, and then move your focusing point around. But if you're trying to do it quickly, you're probably better off relying on zones or letting all the points of active the camera can decide where to go with that. The Fuji is sadly gonna be at the end of it. Although it has a great single point system, it does lack when it comes to continuous autofocus. It's slow, it hunts. Although it does have a touchscreen interface, it's not very responsive, and you can find yourself having to tap and then wait a moment for it to actually lock on. It just doesn't give you the confidence to feel like you're gonna get that shot in continuous autofocus. Now, when it comes to image quality, we really wanna evaluate not only the kit lens that comes with the camera, but also the sensor. But I do also wanna say that 24 megapixel APS-C 
these sensors have been around for a long time. I mean, the E6000 has one and it's been around for a long time. And so what we're really talking about goes beyond resolution. I mean, it really comes down to things like high ISO performance and low light or dynamic range. And especially for beginning photographers, not necessarily going to get into RAW right away. What do the JPEGs look like natively out of the camera? What's the color profile of the camera in its standard format? And so in that regard, number one goes to the Fuji X-T100. I mean, Fuji have already built a reputation for having excellent color science. Uh, and certainly the sensor delivers great low light performance performance, beautiful color, and not only that, but the other color profiles like the monochrome, the Vivid, the Astia, the Provia, those are all actually very fun and usable to use as well. Now the Fuji X-T100 also gives you a 15 to 45. I mean, it's a pretty lightly built lens, but optically it's decent. It performs throughout its range. Now in second place, the Canon EOS M50. I mean, Canon have always had fantastic JPEGs, a great reputation for having good vibrancy, a nice warmth to the color and very pleasing skin tones. So that is still no exception. The Canon delivers great JPEGs out of there. And certainly the RAW files are excellent too. And again, the only reason I wouldn't put it above the Fuji is just because it's extra profiles just aren't as effective or as fun to use as the Fuji X-T100. But we're talking a very close second place. Now the Canon EOS M50 comes with a 15 to 45 lens and on the plus side it looks really nice it's well built it doesn't have a cheap feel to it however it does have a slower maximum aperture of the telephoto range 6.3 versus 5.6 it's still a decent optical performer but that does keep it a little bit below the Fuji's kit lens the Sony a6000 is showing its age. I mean, that's pretty natural. It's a four-year-old sensor. Uh, we, the other problem too is that Sony in recent years has done a lot of work making their color science much better. But the a6000 was before all of those changes. So often the color looks kind of strange, not a very good saturation. Reds especially get rendered in a funny way and skin tones aren't always pleasing. If you're gonna shoot raw, well, certainly you can fix a lot of that, but a lot of beginners are not and that's why it finds itself in third place. Now the Sony A6000's kit lens is a 16 to 50. It's a decent range. I do like the power zoom because it makes it very compact. And that's the big appeal of this lens. It's easy to transport. But unfortunately, it's kind of infamous as a poor optical performer, especially I find at the wide angle where it gets a little bit soft. You could step up to a better lens, but then at that point, we're talking about way higher price point. It's prohibitive for an entry level starting photographer. And so that brings us to lens lineup, because the fact is you're going to want to move away from your kit lens eventually. So which company takes the best care of you? Well, number one has to go to Fujifilm. As a company, they have the largest selection of high quality, specific APS-C lenses of pretty much any manufacturer. So if you want compact, if you want high quality, if you want wide aperture, if you want low price point, they've got you covered. Now in number two, you've got Sony. And actually, to be honest, when the A6000 first came out, I would have said they had one of the worst lines of lenses available, just very few choices, and they were widely panned for that. But now in the last few years, they've really come a long way in making new optical formulas and getting new lenses out there. So you got a few big benefits here. First off, they're the only company out of these three that other third-party manufacturers are aggressively making mirrorless specific lenses for. Zeiss makes some great lenses, Sigma makes some great lenses. That adds to the overall choices that you have. On top of that, they have a whole full frame line of lenses that share the same mount. So you could also increase your range by buying some of those full frame lenses. So that really is a smart move and they've come a huge way. Now in third place is gonna be the Canon EOS M50, but let me explain why, okay? So first, when they came out with the EOS M system, Canon had a fairly disappointing number of lenses. They really weren't supporting the system. What they expected you to use was the Canon EF to EOS M adapter with their larger SLR lenses, but that added extra cost and extra bulk. But now, Canon EOS M50 system has at least as many nice lenses for the beginner system as say the Sony system. And the only reason that they're not getting a higher ranking here is because they don't have the third-party lens support and uh, you know you still don't have all that full frame glass without using the EOS M adapter but they have come a long way. Now when it comes to price point this should be a quick and simple one because it's just numbers this Sony is going to win because it is consistently the lowest price point on the market sometimes by a fair margin and I put Canon and Fuji as a tie for second place you know sometimes the Canon's more expensive but with sales and rebates and markets fluctuating they can be fairly close. 
Hey everyone, it's Jordan, the video guy. Talk about the video features on these cameras. The Canon and Fujifilm both have 4K, but the Fuji runs at 15 frames per second, which is essentially useless. And the Canon 4K mode has a heavy crop and disables your dual pixel autofocus. So we're gonna focus on 1080 recording. But my real number one choice for this is the Canon EOS M50. Now this camera gets us a fully articulating screen, a standard three and a half mil microphone jack, and Canon's excellent dual pixel autofocus when you're shooting in 1080 recording. 1080 quality is fairly good, but when quality is less important than usability, this camera kills it, and that's why it's become such a popular option for vloggers all over the place. In second place, I've got the Sony a6000, which got a huge image quality upgrade when they added XAVC recording to it a few years back, and that gives us a very nice, sharp, clean 1080 image. Real drawback is there's no way to get a mic jack in and we don't have a fully articulating screen. But if you need a little B-cam or you just wanna shoot some montages to music on your vacation, this camera will still do an excellent job and the video quality in 1080 is the best of the bunch. Fuji comes in last place, and this is a real disappointment because we've got a mic jack, but it's a two and a half mil jack, which stinks because you'll always need adapters for it. But it debuts the fully articulating flip screen for Fuji, and it's a great design. Unfortunately, it's attached to a camera that shoots video that looks bad. It's ugly video. Doesn't look good at all. You can see some samples of it right here. So unfortunately, while I can see Fuji moving in the right direction, they've got some higher end cameras with killer video quality. This is a big letdown for a camera that seems kind of video optimized looking at it in the first place. All right, so who's our winner in this whole contest? Well, it might be a shock, but I'm actually gonna give it to the Canon EOS M50. And here's why. It is by far the most well-rounded of the three cameras. And remember, this competition is about which camera is best for the beginning photographer starting out. The Canon EOS M50 has all the things that beginners want. Nice JPEGs, and most importantly, a very intuitive and easy to learn interface. That's so key for somebody starting out in this whole thing. It's got great menus, I love the touch screen, the dual pixel hybrid autofocus is the best of the bunch and having quick autofocus is also so important and you do have some decent video features. So that means that the Fuji X-T100 is going to be left in number two and although it did get a lot of wins in a lot of categories, keep this in mind. Although it's a gorgeous looking camera, has great dial controls and has a lot of lenses, a lot of that's going to be more important to a more experienced photographer as opposed to somebody just starting out. The 4K video is not going to win any awards. That was pretty sad. And on top of that, you know, you've got slow autofocus. This is such a big deal. People starting out want to get their kids in focus. They want to get pets in focus. They want to get sporting events working. And a lot of that stuff, the Fuji X2100 is just going to let you down on. So it's got a lot of features, but it's not going to get our number one spot. Now, when it comes to the Sony a6000, I guess that's our third place, but yeah, it's the oldest camera, that makes sense. And yet, I still think it's a perfectly viable option, especially if you're on a budget. It's a great kit even to this day. And I guess when I look at it, that's really its greatest strength. It still holds up even though it's four years later. So it leaves the door open for Sony to perhaps make a new version of the a6000, something that's still at a lower price point but gives you modern features. I feel like Fuji and Canon have left the door open there. For example, if you look at the new RX105, they've made a new version. In Canada, we call it the RX105, A. Eh? And what they've done there is just added a new processor, given it better color profiles and updated it to be current with a lot of the modern cameras. So maybe we'll get an A6000A coming out, eh? All right, I hope you found that little buyer's guide useful, hopefully demystified some of the pros and cons of the three different systems, help you make a better decision of what camera might fit your lifestyle best. That is really what it's all about. And keep in mind that as well, if you spend just a little bit more money, you can upgrade to substantially better cameras, especially in the case of the Fuji, you can go from an X100T to an X-T20, which is a fantastic camera and a good focuser all around. To a lesser extent, you know, the A6000, you can move up to a 6300 or 6500, get that 4K capability and faster focusing and shooting. And the Canon ES M50, it's a pretty good bargain where it is, but you could move up to an M5 if you wanted to. Overall though, I hope you guys found this useful. Don't forget, leave comments below. Check out our Twitter and Instagram feeds. Let us know what you think there. And again, subscribe. We really want to see those subscriber numbers keep going up. So please do that. We really appreciate it. Otherwise, we'll be back with a great video next time. See you soon.